Upon its theatrical release in 1985, the film Clue, written and directed by Jonathan Lynn, was a flop. Audiences were put off by its multiple endings, which were randomly shown at varying theaters, and critics derided it on almost every level, especially over the fact that it was a movie based on a board game. But when the film was re-released into the burgeoning home video market, it found a new appreciation, and now nearly 40 years later, it is rightfully regarded as a cult classic, delighting generations of viewers with its peerless cast of character actors, outrageous physical comedy, and especially its sparkling, witty script. Just about every line from Clue can be considered a classic, so the great pop culture debate wondered, what is the best Clue quote? I'm your host, Eric Resniak, and I am frightened because I also drink the cognac, mon dieu. I can't stay here by myself. Apparently, I turned her into a German. And I really can't do this by myself, so please welcome my panelists. Of course, since they're each being addressed as a pseudonym, you'll realize that nobody here is being called by their real name. First, it's Curtis Creekmore. How many husbands have you had, Curtis? Mine or other men's? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Curtis will be performing the roles of Mrs. Peacock and Mr. Green on this podcast. Next, it's Kate Raculia, looking all pale and tragic. And accordingly, she will be giving voice to Mrs. White. You are always a rather stupidly optimistic man. It's true. And finally, who are you? Perry Mason? No, it's Michael Schwartz. Well, the double negative has led to proof positive. And Michael will be playing Wadsworth tonight. Uh, and for our little Dalian today, I will be playing the roles of Miss Scarlet, Colonel Mustard, and Professor Plum. So before we jump into the debate, how does this work? Since this is a mini so there was no public poll. Our panelists simply submitted their top 20 favorite clue quotes. We mutually agreed on the top 16, and we randomly added them to a bracket. Now we argue about it and insult each other, all for your amusement. Want to play along at home? Go to greatpopculturedebate.com and find the polls and brackets tab. There you'll find the listener bracket for this and every episode. Make a copy for yourself. That's super important. Make a copy. Fill it out and see if you if your picks line up with ours, or if you want to take the secret passageway from the study to the kitchen and stab us in the back when we get it all wrong. So now on to the debates. To maximize comedic effort, we're going to attempt to act these out in what we like to call GPCD Radio Theater. So on with the show. First up, it's the difference between amen and gay men. Curtis, take it away as Mrs. Peacock. Go away! But your souls are in danger. Our lives are in danger, you beatnik. <laughs> And, and that is up against Kate. Take it as Mrs. White. Are you a cop? No, I'm a plant. A plant? I thought men like you were usually called a fruit. <laughs> so it's beatnik versus fruit. And we're going to go around the horn. I'm going to start with Michael. Which one are you going with? Oh, I. for me personally, it's like I, when I went through a lot of these, I judged these off of like, which ones are the ones that I use on a regular basis? Because Clue is a regular place that I go to to quote when I'm in a conversation with, well, any of the poor people that talk to me. <laughs> but um, I'm definitely going with Beatnik because I do that all the time. I'm like, our lives are in danger, you Beatnik. Absolutely. Kate, what about you? Same reason. Same reason. Our lives are in danger, you Beatnik. Endlessly useful to say that. And just her delivery of it is so delightful. <laughs> For sure. And Curtis? I think I'm the lone standout here. And that's okay. Um when it came down to what everybody voted for, I think we were all in favor of moving Beatnik onto the bracket at least. But I love, I mean, this is a gay ass podcast. <laughs> and who would we be if we didn't include a line and for me to support a line about being a fruit? So I, I love, um, what's her name? Leslie, help me. Leslie Ann Warren. Leslie Ann Warren. Um, I love her delivery of the. I thought you people were a fruit. Like it's just, it's so good and kind of before it's time or maybe it was during it's time and like it wasn't okay then, but it's okay now and hilarious now, but I'm going to go with fruit. (laughs) I hear you. And I, I will say like her delivery is absolutely perfect. That's one of the things I, this we'll get into this as we go along, but this is a cast of character actors, right? Like none of these people were really big movie stars at the time that they filmed this. And Leslie and Warren was really best known for Cinderella, the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical that was on TV in the seventies. And then she was also in Victor Victoria and kind of playing a ditzy role. This is a very different role for Leslie and Warren. Mm-hmm. She's very arch, very kind of sassy and sour and also a total sex pot. Um, and her delivery of this is great, but I can't say no to beatnik because, 
again, like Michael, use it constantly. And in fact, that entire exchange where the kingdom of heaven is at hand, <laughs> that whole thing is so good. Um, but the our lives are in danger. You beat Nick. It's uh, it's iconic to me. Take a drink at home. Drink. The first oh, <laughs> get ready, so everybody. Get ready. <laughs> so it is three to one. Uh, our lives are in danger. You beat Nick. Continuing to round two. Next up, it's the definition of a butler versus an iconic confession. And I will start as Colonel Mustard. Is this place for you? Oh, indeed, no, sir. I'm merely a humble butler. And what exactly do you do? I bottle, sir. <laughs> Go. And that up is up against Mrs. White and Kate. The floor is yours. Okay, no pressure. Yes, I, I did it. I killed Yvette. I hated her so much. It, it flames, flames on the side of my face, breathing, breathless, heaving, breaths, heaving. Empty. Uh, <laughs> well my well entire done. life has been building to this moment. To I'm this so moment. honored to share it with all of you. I'm so proud of you. I've never been more proud of Kate Reculli. Everyone, Thank I want you. you to know that. Round I was applause. too chicken to be on the stage in Drama Club. And look at you now. <laughs> look at me now. Hidden behind your desk with no one looking at you. Yes. <laughs> Wearing wet pants and a, and a cat on your lap. Heaving yes. breath. Breathing. Heaving breathless. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm going to go around the horn. And Curtis, where are you coming down on this one? Oh, this one. This one hurts. Because I think, again, I was one of the very few people that wanted the uh, Wadsworth Buttle quote on. It's just, I love that quote. It's it's so simple. I'm Buttle, sir. And his delivery of that quote is just so good. How how can you argue? Especially with Kate. Like, go Kate. That was excellent. Thank you. And Thank excellent you. rendition. There's, <laughs> there's no, no, no competition. It's heaving breathless flames. On the side of my face. Uh, and what about you, Michael? Oh, the, the, I don't even know why we bothered putting anything else up against this. <laughs> Literally, like Kate's delivery, and I'm here trying to hold in every single laugh that I have so that I don't interrupt her iconic moment. Iconic. Uh, uh, um, thank you. Drink. You're welcome. Um, like, I'm actually it, doing it. Like, everybody at home, I'm actually drinking along with you. <laughs> but yes, this has got to be flames. Flames. It is... It's another one that you use. Like when you're just frustrated, you just say flames and you put your hands on the side of your head and you start pulling away like she does. It's... It, it's the one of the more recognizable things from this entire movie. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, okay. I'm assuming you're going with with. That oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I actually I really love I Buttle Sir, and it's a great example of how many puns and like how much wordplay there is in this script, um, which is one of the reasons why I was immediately drawn to it when I saw it when I was in first grade. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and also, it's just oh, it's Tim. Sorry, <laughs> it's Tim Curry. Like he is, he is. The only other time I've seen him have more fun on screen is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Sure. Um, and that is an extremely high bar. <laughs> so he just looks like he's having a great time. It's a great line. But Flames, there's there's no, I mean, an ad-libbed moment. There's nothing that compares to its beauty. <laughs> True. And I have lots of thoughts on, on this as well. Uh, I will save most of them for later on in the competition. But I will say that uh, this moment and also the, it, it doesn't work for in a quote competition, but Mrs. White's standing by the fireplace with the glass yes, smashing yes. Please! 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 <laughs> Those are ones that I go to on a frequent basis. It just doesn't work in a quote competition, no. but this one does. So does. Uh, we are unanimously moving Mrs. White's flame speech on to round two. Next, it's hosting tips from Mrs. Peacock versus lowered expectations. And Curtis, take it away as Mrs. Peacock. Well, someone's got to break the ice and it might as well be me. I mean, I'm used to being a hostess as part of my husband's work and it's always difficult when a group of new friends meet together for the first time to get acquainted. So I'm perfectly prepared to start the ball rolling. I mean, I have absolutely no idea what we're doing here and what I'm doing here, what this place is about, but I am determined to enjoy myself and I'm very intrigued and, oh my, is this soup delicious, isn't it? <laughs> Very well done. Wow, Curtis. Woo! Very well done. Listeners at home, he got it in one take. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my God. All right. So that is up against another Mrs. Peacock Colonel Mustard Exchange. And, and Curtis, I'm going to have you start it again as Mrs. Peacock. 
Everything all right? Yep. Two corpses. Everything's fine. <laughs> so that's our, our choice. And I'm going to start this time with Kate. Oh, boy. I mean, I might be uh, different from you. I'm going to have to give it to, yep, two corpses, everything's fine. Despite your incredible performance, Curtis, just because, yep, two corpses, everything's fine is a little more applicable to daily life. You think? <laughs> See, I think I, I use the Mrs. Peacock speech frequently where I, I'm i determined to enjoy myself <laughs> all the time. Uh, Michael, how about you? Oh my god. Um sorry. So it's like I I I'm absolutely torn because I'm very much I've used very both of these a, a lot and um for me it was quite funny when I was putting together my list this kind of moment in, in capsule alongside the quote I also started keeping a list of what are some of the best sight gags in this movie. Mm -hmm. And literally right before this is the whole the sipping soup with Mrs. White and <laughs> Professor Plum sipping the soup right before this and i'm like oh and if you can't tell i do suffer from pressure of speech um <laughs> exactly <laughs> so um it's very hard but as curtis nailed i'm surprised one take that was amazing it was a thing of beauty it was a it was gorgeous and i will replay that over and over again because we will never hear this quote again during the rest of this podcast because i'm going with two corpses Oh, oh no! Oh, Curtis! Oh my goodness! Curtis, where are you? I'm assuming you're with Mrs. Peacock here. Yeah. So it's really hard. This is a yeah, really difficult it's a tough one. one. I do, I do love the determined to enjoy myself. Like that really makes that quote. But I, I think I voted when I was putting my bracket together for tor for two corpses. I, there's just something so funny about it's his delivery. It's when yeah. he looks in a room, he's like. Yep, two corpses. Everything's fine, and, and it's, it's Martin Mull, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Martin Mull saying that. Yeah, who I will never see as anything other than the principal in oh. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that this predated Sabrina. Doesn't matter. He will always be the pre the principal there. Which is funny to me because, in my opinion, Martin Mull is like everywhere constantly. He had a very large recurring role on Roseanne. Mm -hmm. Oh, Martin yeah. Mull has the yes. hardest working agent in show business, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Whoever that person is, they are doing God's work because he's constantly getting cast. He was on the Golden Girls for an episode. That seems Happy right. birthday, yeah. Betty White. I know you're Happy listening. Happy birthday, Betty White. <laughs> 99 glorious years. Give us oh, more. God. Yeah. 99 more. Absolutely. Another 10. Um, Eric, what do you want? Where are you coming down? I'm fine. I'm at peace with either one of these going forward. If it was me and I had to pick on which one I use more often, it's definitely the Mrs. Peacock monologue. But I understand why people would go for two corpses. It's a punchier line. And it is a... Um, it's right on to the next, right? Whereas this one is kind of a, its own little scene in itself. So you, you just made my mind up for me. I'm going for the peacock. I'm going for determined to enjoy myself because it is a harder line to deliver. Yes, the, it is. The funny part behind it is that it is, she takes like three breaths. I wrote them in so that I would do it the correct way. <laughs> yeah. That is to do. So yeah, I'm going to go with determined to enjoy myself. Okay. So that would leave us split. Uh, and for mini sods, there are no seeds. So the way it works is the round, rab round robin tiebreaker. And uh, normally I would start with myself. Roll a die. I, I, I don't have a, a D4 in front of me. Michael, do you have a D4? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. Sorry. Let's change things for season three. We'll go in reverse alphabetical order. Michael, you're the tiebreaker for the first one. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You hate me, don't nope. you? This um, is my life. <laughs> You know, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, maybe we don't need to do the tiebreaker. I'm coming back to determine to enjoy yeah. myself because that argument, it is a harder, it's a much, it is the harder, it's line, a harder to line to give. Yep. I'm okay. with Kate too. So I think we're both going to switch. And I, and I, mad respect, mad respect Great. to Eileen Brennan, who, to Eileen Brennan. Oh. Oh. Rest, in peace. rest in peace, Eileen Brennan, as well as Madeline Kahn lost Far too soon. Uh, this cast really was a genius. So uh, with that said, we're going to move on. Uh, Mrs. Peacock's amazing <laughs> monologue. And we are going to wrap up the left side of the bracket with exp examining why math is hard. And for Wadsworth, so is brevity. So uh, this is going to be an exchange between Wadsworth and Miss Scarlet. I'm going to have Michael cue it up as Wadsworth. The game is up, Scarlet. You have no more bullets in that gun. Oh, come on. You don't think I'm going to fall for that old trick. 
It's not a trick. There was one shot at Mr. Body in the study, two for the chandelier, two at the lounge door, and one for the singing telegram. That's not six. One plus two plus two plus one. Uh Uh-huh. There was one shot that got the chandelier. That's one plus two plus one plus one. Even if you're right, that would be one plus one plus two plus one, not one plus two plus two plus one. (laughs) Okay, fine. One plus two plus one. Shut up! Point is, there's one bullet in this gun, and guess who's gonna get it? And (laughs) see. All right. And that's up against... (laughs) That's up against... Uh, Wadsworth and the rest of the cast. So I'm going to again have Michael start it off as Wadsworth. Well, to make a long story short, too late. All right. So <laughs> we have to vote. Is it going to be one plus two plus two plus one or too late? I'm going to start with Kate. Uh, too late. Classic. It's, I mean, there are many lines that I think of when I think of, of Clue, but like too late, like that is the thing that it, it's, and it's also, it's the whole cast, right? Like you get the the joy of the whole cast playing together in this really farcical moment. So yeah, too late. Kate, are you drunk? I know. <laughs> You know what? I don't like math. I did very well because I have a great short-term memory, but I don't like math. (laughs) I kid. I love you. You are entitled to your wrong opinions. Um, I'm going to throw it to Curtis. I hate math, but I love this quote. Um, (laughs) I have a collection of shirts that have various things like Rose Apothecary from Schitt's Creek. And I was thinking the other day, I was like, I need a one plus two plus two plus one shirt. Like, is that someone has to make it because I really need it. This quote is amazing. This whole scene is amazing. And the fact that they do it a couple different times, and it's just, Mm -hmm. and Eric, you did such a great job with shut up. Like it's (laughs) it's such a, (laughs) it took me there nailed the way that like her she has a guttural element to it it's just so ferocious where you can see like in her head it's like <laughs> shut up yeah it's like it's, it's great it's so good uh, so i'm absolutely so, math thank you team math all right uh michael you well i i think that this will be the first in many times during the rest of this podcast where kate is wrong <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is shades of cereal oh, it is okay. oh <laughs> this is wheat sweats part three the reckoning <laughs> Kate, I, I will never forgive you for the cereal episode with the twigs and berries that you eat. So it's cool. It's cool. You're you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Right. Oh, that's so cute. But no, this is this is all about math because I, I I use this one too in regular life. And tell me honestly, all four of us sitting here, how many of us were picking out our fingers and literally counting off like he does in the movie and going one plus one plus two plus one? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yep. It, it's it's part of that wonderful sight gag and the, the way that they look at each other in this film when they're doing this and the fact that he's actually confusing Scarlet for a moment <laughs> when he does it. And they actually have terrific chemistry. Everybody they, on the cast has really does. good chemistry, but those two in particular have a, a chemistry. And actually he has it with Mrs. White too, where there's mm-hmm. almost yes. they're almost coming on to one another. Um, but it, it, it's terrific. So I'm also with Team Math on this one. I'm sorry, Kate. You it's know okay. I love you. I know. Um, so we are advancing Team 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. Yeah. Uh, and then we have also on the right side of the bracket, it's a battle of wits between Mrs. White and Mrs. White. So, Kate, you get to do both of these. I'm going to queue up Woo! for the first one. Take it. Husband should be like Kleenex. Soft, strong, and disposable. Indeed they should. And next... Mrs. White again. Kate, go for it. Oh, it's a matter of life after death. Now that he's dead, I have a life. Mm, All right. So well done. Thank you. (laughs) I'm going to throw this one first to Curtis. Where are you coming down on this one? Uh, It is 100% life and death for me. That one, (sighs) I get where they were going with the Kleenex, (laughs) but- it just mm-hmm. it doesn't hit me the same way that it apparently hit you all. I was looking at the brackets. Spoilers, we can do that <laughs> going into it. And I was like, well, I'm gonna be by myself on that one. I just think the it's it's a better written line, the life after death. Like it's it's quippier, it's cuter to me, and like Kleenex is just ad placement. So I'm gonna go with the life after death. This is one of those ones where I think both of these are excellent. And yeah. Mrs. White in particular has kind of like a screwball comedy element to a lot of her dialogue. She gets so many great lines. Yeah. Yeah. In this scene in particular where they're kind of doing the grilling in the study, this is also where you get – this is not nominated, I don't believe, but the like, uh, how many husbands have you had? Uh, mm-hmm. And what about your second husband? He, he disappeared. Well, that was his job. He was, was an illusionist, so but he never good. reappeared. He wasn't a very good illusionist. <laughs> Like that is classic golden age of cinema, screwball comedy. You can imagine that with like bogey and Bacall type thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think I may have voted for Kleenex at first, but I do think it's a matter of life after death is actually a stronger line. It's a better play on words. So I'm going to switch to my vote to life after death as well. Michael? Well, I, I'm still in design, but the third quote that needs to go in here that goes in this like triptych for me is life after death is improbable as sex after marriage. Correct. Yes, that's also <laughs> there. She's full of them in that scene. I know. Um, but God, I'm actually, I'm going with Kleenex. <laughs> It's because to, to clean like husbands sh- should be like cleaning strong, soft and disposable is a little bit more unique to me than the quote of matter of life after death. Now that he's dead, I have a life. I, I, I love it, but it's a little bit more generic to me than the Kleenex line, which I think was a little bit more inventive, a little bit more interesting. And I, I use them both, but it's kind of fun. But I'm, I'm going to vote for Kleenex. OK, I do think it's worth pointing out that when this film c- first came out, I mentioned this in the intro, um, the critics called the script boring and and um, stupid. And I'm just like, man, hmm, weren't they wrong? Watching Paul Blart Mall Cop or something <laughs> like that. Like, think, think about the fucking bar that was set for that. Uh, Kate, go ahead and take it. What's your what's your opinion? I'm going to go with Kleenex. Um, I think that it is. Uh, Like life after death, now that he's dead, I have a life. Maybe it's because it's buried in that incredible monologue where she has zinger after zinger after zinger. But like husband should be like Kleenex, soft, strong and disposable stands by itself in that particular scene where she's defending the fact that she's had how many husbands, yours or other people's. Um, (laughs) And yeah, I just think it's a little punchier. But also like we all win when Mrs. White opens her mouth. (laughs) (laughs) There's no losers here. It's, It's very true. So I believe that leaves us deadlocked two and two. With Michael as our tiebreaker. I thought Michael did the first tiebreaker. No, but he then I, I I rescinded it. I voted. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, I, I'm not moving on this one. I'm going to stick with Kleenex. I'm sorry. It's, it's cool. It's I, would, I would have voted for that one, too, if it had moved down You'll the line. You'll wipe up your tears, Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like I'm afraid of you, Creekmore. I, I feel like there's a, a line between uh, White and uh, Wadsworth here where she's like, oh, you'll regret this. I'll get you alone one day. And, it's, it's, and no, one, one no, one, no one in their right mind would ever be alone with you, Mrs. White. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I do That's have my fascinator. Much. I don't have it on, but it's in the closet. <laughs> you were serving us big Madeline Kahn energy there, and I appreciate it. <laughs> so next up, we have two quotes that put Peacock in the hot seat. Uh, I will start the first one as Professor Plum. It's you and me, honey bunch. Oh, God. <laughs> and next, it's Michael as Wadsworth. Take it away. You murdered them all. You were the person missing when the cook and Mr. Body were murdered. And the cook used to be your cook. Don't you remember your fatal mistake? You told us at dinner that we were eating one of your favorite recipes. And monkey's brains, though popular in Cantonese cuisine, are not often to be found in Washington, D.C. Is that what we ate? Well done. Good (laughs) job, gentlemen. (laughs) Well executed. That's also not an easy one to deliver. So uh, it is monkey's brains versus honey bunch. I tried to make a honey bunches of monkey's brains joke there, but it it wasn't working. Um, So I'm going to start with Curtis. Which one are you going with? This one, I'm sorry. This one was a total throwaway for me. Uh, I'm going to go with honey bunch, but my vote is up for grabs because I I didn't really connect. Like... (sighs) I, I like the honey bunch line. I get why the the monkey's brains is kind of now. Nope. Don't. Okay. Uh, honey bunch. <laughs> okay. Um, I will say, I think for the, the honey bunch line is funny only because of the way the Christopher Lloyd deploys it. That is 100%. You and me, honey, honey bunch. Honey bunch. And the way he punches bunch to yep. make it sound threatening and lascivious. And then Eileen Brennan's response. Oh, God. Like, it's <laughs> that is a delivery, not a line issue. Whereas the monkey's brains, though popular in Cantonese cuisine, is a great fucking line. So uh, I'm voting for monkey's brains. Uh, Michael. So this this is a hands down for me. But this whole bracket kills me. <laughs> Like, because the two Mrs. White quotes and these two quotes against each other are some of my favorite lines in the entire movie. So I had a lot of choosing. But and I told you, Eric, when we started this, my favorite line in the entire movie, and I probably use this more than anything else, is monkey's brains. Yeah. And I I also I want to thank you for punching the Washington (laughs) D.C. 
No, this is my favorite part. And like, but this whole bracket killed me. I sent you a text about hating you when I was working on this uh, it's fine. bracket. It's I hate myself. Welcome to the club. Uh, <laughs> I know. Go ahead. <laughs> so you're going to hate me too, Michael. I, I'm going to give it to Honey Bunch specifically because I see this quote as representative of all the times in the script, that the men are levicious and the white are all like, get off me, get your mitts off me. <laughs> oh, God, I just really loved that energy. Still love that energy. So yes, I'm voting honey bunch. And I believe that gives us another deadlock, which it and does. It will be Kate is the tiebreaker this time. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> I gotta go honey bunch. I gotta go honey bunch. I do. I do. Uh, honey bunches of monkey brains. <laughs> Michael, if it makes you feel any better, you did a wonderful job delivering that line. And uh, I think you did it very proud. And now you, you did. Have, never have to do it again. <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next two examples of how this script slaps. Uh, we're going to go to a Wadsworth one and take it away, Michael. At the start of the evening, Yvette was here by herself, waiting to offer you all a glass of champagne. And I was in the hall. I know because I was there. <laughs> Very well done. And next, we're going. This one's going to uh, bear with us, folks, because this is going to involve some technicalities. So, <laughs> all right. It's going to be Mr. Green, but first, we're going to have Kate chiming in as Mrs. Peacock. Whoa! I, I had to stop her from screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. All right. I want to start this time. So we have uh, in the hall because I was there versus I had to stop her from screening. And I want to start with Kate. <laughs> I really do love, um, I know because I was there, because again, it's that sort of linguistic playfulness that's all over the script, but I had to stop her from screaming. <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> And so it's good. yeah, it's it's a it's a high water energy mark in sort of the first third of the movie, and it's fantastic. And um, oh my god, my brain, my brain, what's his name? The actor Michael McKean. Michael, Michael McKean. McKean. It's incredible. It's an incredible reading. <laughs> it is, it is. All right, Michael, how about you? Oh, this one is is hands down the I had to stop her from screaming because this is this is Michael McKean's best delivery, best line in the <laughs> entire movie, short of like. Somebody like the the moment when they ask if who wants to go with the vet and the I'll go I'll go I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Actually, the two of them in the attic, the entire part of that is hilarious. <laughs> I'm standing at the bottom ahead. of the stairs. I'll be right behind you. I know. That's what worries <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, Curtis, how about you? I guess I'm going to be the bad guy and go with uh, because I was there. It's it's his delivery on this one. It's yes. just it's, it's so, so, good. Yeah. so good. I know because I was there. It's it's just <laughs> so good. And I think I'm going going to go down in the flames on Mrs. White's face. But oh well. I, I think you are. I think you are heaving flames. I'm also going with had to stop her from screaming. As a child, I would often delight in sneaking up behind my brother and slapping him across the face. <laughs> and so. But it holds a special wow. place in my heart. Is he not going to wrong with Chad? No, that was Todd. Oh, um, okay. He did not appreciate it, but I thought it was great. Um, <laughs> so with the, uh, three to one, it is I had to stop her from screaming. And finally, the film accurately predicts American politics in 2020. And this one is going to be between Wadsworth, Mr. Green, and Mrs. White. <laughs> so I'm going to ha- throw it to you, Michael, to take it away. Go with for it, Wadsworth. Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. You're a bit late for that. I hate it when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the noise you make. Well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, Michael, why don't you take us to the end of the bracket with your final Wadsworth parting shot? Communism was just a red herring. Exactly. And frankly, I think three or four different people in the movie say that exact line, but I, I think yes. Modsworth is the best. So uh, we need to vote. Uh, I'm going to start with Curtis here. I think I'm, I have to go with green. The, the you're a bit late for that. It's like I get that communism as a red herring is was a big thing then. It's a big thing now. Uh, but I think just the, the you're a bit late for that is it's just it's better. It's better. Okay, uh, you're entitled to your own opinion, Kate. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I'm flipping all over the place. Communism is just a red herring. Herring, excellent pun, but you're a bit late for that. And maybe it's just because I'm cranked to 11 all the time. But I say this like to the cats. Like, <laughs> it's like it just comes up a lot in passing. And the, and his spirited delivery really speaks to me. So, yeah, that. And wow. also, and her like, ah, it's just really funny. <laughs> Michael, how about you? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to make sure that I'm going to send you an Oscar at the end of the night, Kate. You definitely are, you. <laughs> are getting it this time. Um, but I, I get what you guys are saying. But like, I, I probably say communism is, was a red herring a couple of times a week. I know mm-hmm. it, it, it doesn't necessarily hold up over time, but it just like it. It, it just fits in the conversation a lot easier for you. So then you need, you need more, you need the situational part for, for yeah, you're a bit late true. for that. Um, but granted, I mean, Oh God, Madeline Condom, all of them in that, that scene, the look on her face when she whimpers like that is just, <laughs> Oh my God. It's so much. Um, <sighs> I think, I, I think I am going to give it to, I didn't mean to frighten you. Okay, so that means I'm the lone one doing communism, and I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm fine being the lone communist. Um, I will say this. I'm fine going down. Um, I think <laughs> I'm particularly... <laughs> uh, I think that uh, this line is particularly relevant given our current political mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. L- literally the other day, I was like, oh my God, in the 2020 election, communism really was the red <laughs> Well, no, like the, the, the Latino vote in Florida literally did think that Joe Biden wanted to turn everybody into the communist state like Cuba. True. That's literally why they voted for the Republicans. So I was like, those crazy bastards, they did it. <laughs> <laughs> but also it's one of those lines that is actually central to the point of the movie, which is they're yes. all being blackmailed and most of them are being blackmailed because of something having to do with communism. Mm hmm. Or but un-American activities. Yeah. American <laughs> activities. She was a socialist. I know. She had friends that were a socialist. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Um, but, uh, God bless this movie for having a little bit of meat on its bones. Just, <laughs> just going to say that. <laughs> a little bit of political relevance. <laughs> I don't think it is on its own a terrific line. I just think it's a relevant line. So with that, I'm glad to bow out and have the You're a Bit Late for that continue on into round two. And with that, that is the end of round one. We've eliminated half of our quotes. Eight murders. This is getting serious. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and be right back. So please feel free to use the telephone in the lap. Um, no, in the stu- mm, No, um, <laughs> would you be kind enough to wait in the library? We wouldn't recommend sampling the cognac. We'll be right back. All right. I also do- Hey, Kate. Hey, Eric. So I heard, and this may be true, that you were actually the Great Pop Culture Debate's very first Patreon subscriber. (gasps) Was I? You were. You're not only a panelist, you're also a founder. Also a founder. I mean, it does give me a feeling of joy to contribute towards high quality podcasts like the Great Pop Culture Debate so that, you know, like I get swag. Yeah. What kind of swag do you get? Um, You get a button. That's the one I signed up for. Is there a tote? I feel like there should be a tote. (laughs) There's not a tote yet, but that's a great idea. I have some other ideas that I'm working on. You get access to things early. You get access to Patreon only little mini sods. You get to hear the warm-ups before when everyone's just kind of getting their little sea legs before they get into the main the main attraction and you get season zero you get season zero it's exactly right you will never hear the otherwise folks and there's some great episodes in that which include best madonna single best rupaul's drag race lip sync best uh 90s cartoon and the only way you can hear those is by getting a patreon sponsorship with for as low as two dollars a month then you even get season zero just for that so so thank you very much kate uh we appreciate all of our patreon sponsors and if you do have the interest please go to patreon.com backslash great pop culture debates and support us and we're back for the finale of the best clue quote but before we continue why is j edgar hoover on your phone that call was for me (laughs) <laughs> he's on everybody else's why shouldn't he be on yeah. mine <laughs> all right so actually if you're, if you're a gay man on this call you know why jay Edgar hoover's on your phone he's on grinder <laughs> from beyond the grave all right so 
Uh, <laughs> we are down to our elite eight, and we're going to start right off with our lives are in danger. You beat Nick versus yes, I did it. The iconic Mrs. White monologue. I'm going to throw it to Kate Reculia. Where do you come down? I hated her so <laughs> much. It, it the flames on the sides of my face. No, it, it's just, I mean, it, people know what, what it, it, if you've never seen Clue, which like, who are you? <laughs> but like, like people know this quote as being kind of like the, the big moment in Clue. And it's just, I mean, like I said before, it's improvised. It's pure Madeline Kahn being in the moment, being a genius. And it's, and it's endlessly applicable to anything in life that fills you with a passion that makes you unable to express yourself. <laughs> We have no choice but to stand. All yes. right. Uh, <laughs> Curtis, how about you? Yeah, uh, same. Like, yes, I did it. I killed it. That's like the, just the tiny pauses. Like, it's mm-hmm. just so brilliant. It is so brilliantly it's delivered. It's beautifully delivered. It really is. And totally made up, right, mm-hmm. Kate? Like, yep. I, I had read yeah. that too. Totally ad-libbed. And you're going to ad-lib the best fucking line, It's in my opinion, out of this entire movie, you're just going to make it up. Like, oh, it is. Well, it has like all of the chemistry that all of them have together, right? Like it kind of comes to the fore in this moment where she's so in it. She is Mrs. White in her weird way, confessing to killing a vet. (laughs) It's just really, really good. It's magic. I love it. So, so good. So yeah, I'm totally, yes, I did it. And Michael? It's going to be flames because like, I did see all three of the versions of this because I, I love it. I love it. I had to go see it because I was 13 at the time, not nearly as young as Kate was at the time, mind you. But <laughs> and this, I, this like this line stood out so much for me that I literally had to go back because I had to scour it to see when they were showing the other two endings of it. But yeah, this is flames on the side of my face without a doubt. And this is only in the C ending, right? This is only in the they all did it ending. Oh, right. Because yeah. in the other ones, it would have been Mrs. Sc- Miss Scarlet or Peacock who did yep. it. Right. It is interesting that we don't have any solo male killers in this movie. That's no. interesting. Sexist. Before. <laughs> and I do want to point out, if you look, there is a slight plot hole where when uh, Yvette is talking right before she's about to be killed, she has the line, which I also said is not in here because I use it all the time. He knows every inch of my body. <laughs> like, <laughs> Mrs. White knows every inch of Yvette's body. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, um, but that it always that made me laugh. Um, so anyway, we are advancing to the final four flames on the side of my face. Next up, it is uh, somebody's got to break the ice versus one plus two plus two plus one. And Curtis, what are you going with? Mrs. Peacock, Eileen Brennan is stunning, amazing. Didn't uh, it? Uh, so good so good flames on the sides of my face um but i gotta go with math the one plus two plus two plus one like it brings you in you have to sit there and think like okay let me think through how many actual bullets were fired from that gun because a revolver has six that's the whole joke that's the idea behind the joke so it's it's a smart joke it's the back and forth is so so funny so i'm calling it math i failed geometry but i'm going with (laughs) math (laughs) <laughs> team math all right uh michael oh this is like this is a hard one given everything that's left this one was a hard one for me um because literally that that's iconic for eileen brennan in that but when wadsworth is counting out and you're going wait was it really one for the chandelier or two and you picture vet running out of the study um with the gun <laughs> Her her arms flailing a- around and and the guys drop to the ground, <laughs> and she she shoots one to the chandelier and then she gets the door. <laughs> but um, I did it. It is open. <laughs> Why are you? And I, and I will say from this scene, I will say from this scene, one of the things that I was sad didn't make it was let us in, let us in, let us out, let us out, let us out. Yeah, that's a good one. I love also. That one too. I can't take any more scares, which my gentleman friend says literally on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, living with me, we'll do that to a person. So okay, it sounds I'm like going with math. You're going with team math. Uh, Kate? I am also going with math. And I think it is not 
uh, a coincidence that like three of the last four quotes we've discussed, our lives are in danger, you beat Nick. Yes, I did it. And one plus two plus two plus one. They are each the sort of like pinnacle jokes of the three different endings, right? Sure. Yes. Because like our lives are in danger, you beat Nick is when Mrs. Peacock is like, you know, doesn't know that the FBI is outside. But that call from J. Edward Hoover was for, for Wadsworth in that <laughs> ending. But anyway, I, they're, they're all they're all great, but um, and you know, I'm determined to enjoy myself. Words to live by, but one plus two plus two plus one is great. I'll give it to a two. I also just want to say before we move on from Mrs. Peacock and Eileen Brennan, um, the design for the costumes in this movie oh, as a kid, I was like, so good. why aren't they all just wearing the colors that they're supposed to be wearing? As an adult, <laughs> I appreciate that they're not. Mm-hmm. But the Mrs. Peacock, especially the fascinator that <laughs> over the course of the movie starts to fall into her face, <laughs> is so good. And she turns it into a moment in and of itself. Like yeah. it becomes almost a secondary character for her. Yep. Um, and also in the like, quotes that didn't make the bracket there's the they're talking about her taking the bribes and and like it's disgusting she's like how would you know when we over in that senator's bathroom we are moving one plus two plus two plus one on to the final four next it's uh men should or husband should be like kleenex versus you and me honey bunch and i'm gonna throw it to michael first okay in this one this makes it pretty easy for me i'm voting for honey bunch because that's another line that i pretty like it was up against Monkey's Brains in the first round, which made it very challenging for me. And I did vote for Monkey's Brains. But since Honey Bunch is moving on, I got to stick with Honey Bunch at this point because it just like that that look in Christopher Lloyd's eye when he's looking down at Eileen Brennan and he's delivering them. It's you and me, Honey Bunch. <laughs> it's just so threatening. And it's like five words. It made my skin crawl and I was 13. Exactly. And her was, oh, God. Um, <laughs> her is- I'm going to go with Kleenex. I I just, like, I, I don't like the Honey Bunch line. I, I didn't like it before. I'm sad that it made it this far. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the Kleenex just because Mrs. White is the best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Kate. Uh, Kleenex. Mrs. White is the best character, even though someday I would like to hire someone to make me a couture Halloween costume of Mrs. Peacock's garb. (laughs) Oh, my God. I know two people on this call who have gone as Mrs. White to various uh, (sighs) events. And it's not me. And it's not Kate. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. I have done that once or twice. I was an ugly ass Mrs. White, I was hideous. It was <laughs> tragic. Hell, hell, tragic. Oh <laughs> Curtis, wait, wait till you see me as Mrs. White. You'll think better of yourself. It's, it's really a moment. Can you send me that picture? I would appreciate it. <laughs> After this is over, I'll send you a picture if I can Perfect. find it. Uh, and actually, folks, that will be on our Instagram. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> check over to Great Pop Culture Debate on Instagram. We'd love for you to see it. Maybe put that um, one behind the Patreon so people have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll figure that out. Um, I am also going to vote for Kleenex. I'm so uh, I'm sorry. Honey Bunch is out. Uh, I just think we have to have let's let's two Mrs. White on yep. the final four. But I think it's fine. That's right. Oh yeah, it's totally you're fine. all wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with that and finally in our top our final eight had to stop her from screaming versus you're a bit late for that i'm gonna start with chris <sighs> that's a tough one um yeah both mr greens and i appreciate that there is some green representation in the final four um fruits man. all the way <laughs> see yeah uh you're a bit late for that. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. I think that's the best. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't hear it. You're a bit late for that. Yeah, that's okay. the best one. <laughs> uh, Michael. No, this has to be I had to stop her from screaming. That is literally because it, it there, there's a whole airplane reference into that. You know, I love that 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 kind of I think it's a nod to that, too. That whole scene in airplane where they're stopping her from screaming and reach, but yeah no it's got to be i had to stop her from screaming and the people are lined up someone's got a yep. wrench someone's got like a bear trap Harry Krishna with the wrench yes <laughs> exactly um and then it's also reenacted later in the movie where wadsworth again yes. slaps her yes. for really That's no reason so um, but okay. all right kate oh my god i love this movie this movie like <laughs> i love I love slapsticky screwball comedy and I love murder mysteries and 
and there are a lot of other factors in there, but I honestly think Clue is probably my Rosetta Stone. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. Got it in there real early. I think I got to give it to Head to Stop Her from Screaming. Had to stop her from screaming. <laughs> I do too. I think yep. again, it's one of those. And when I'm looking at this final four right now, it's I good. think these are the fine the 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 four mm-hmm. quotes. Maybe Kleenex is the one that I, I'm I'm not 100 sold about. But taking that step back, I think the other three are absolutely all like moments from that movie. Where if you had to super cut it into like a TikTok video, I can't <laughs> believe that's a word I said. Those yeah. are, those you just said that, Eric. You did. <laughs> I don't even know what's um, TikTok. Exactly. <laughs> Gotcha song. Um, okay, so final four, we're moving right on to it. It's Flames on the Side of My Face versus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, and I want Michael to tell me who he's going with. Flames. Flames. All right. Uh, That's uh, all you can okay. say about that. Flames. Curtis. This one makes me want to rip my heart out. You have one? <laughs> These are, to me, my fake black heart that sits in it's coal I, that's how my body runs um <clears throat> these are the to me the two best quotes if this were the final two i would be happy so it's really difficult for me to pick between the two of them but it's flames like it's it's flames it is it, it flames on the sides of my face it's the best quote one plus two i will get that shirt someone sent it to me <laughs> um but yeah flames Speaking of t-shirts, I do have a t-shirt that I got at DragCon, which please come back, DragCon, which is the ladies of Clue with their murder weapons, but recreating the cover from Clueless. They're all in the post. Oh my God. Uh, (laughs) It was a cherished possession. I don't remember what stand I got it from, but um, I get compliments on that shirt every time I wear it. So um, yeah. yeah. The final battle in the final four is uh, Kleenex versus Screaming. Uh, the exact quotes are, husband should be like Kleenex, soft, strong, and disposable. And I had to stop her from screaming. I'm going to start with Kate. I had to stop her from screaming. Michael. This is no contest. I actually agree with Kate screaming. <gasps> and Curtis. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I had voted against Kleenex early on because I just felt like it wasn't a super, super strong line. So, but honestly... Does it matter? <laughs> it kind of doesn't because our final two is flames on the side of my face versus I had to stop her from screaming. And uh, I'm going to go around the horn real quick. But before I do that, I want to say I have not one, but two different coffee mugs that reference <laughs> the flames on the side of my face quote. So that's why I'll start it off by saying I'm voting for flames on the side of my face and I'm going to turn it over to Curtis. All right, everybody listening, think of when you're sending gifts slash gifs, however you say it, to other people. Of all of these quotes, which one have you actually sent to someone? I send flames on the sides of my face to people on a monthly basis, if not weekly. <clears throat> and that probably says a little bit about my life, but like it's so it's gifable. It's from. It's memorable. It's it's so so good. Just watch these five seconds, and you've seen enough of the movie to convince you to watch the rest of it. Truth. All right, Michael. I'm going to be turning Kate's rendition of this into my ringtone. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> so it is definitely, without a doubt, hands down, flames out of the side of my head. <laughs> what? And flames out of the side of my head. <laughs> Can, can we shut up? That? You know what I meant. <laughs> Kate? It has to be flames. It does. I, I have that same coffee mug. It's also such a such a mood, you know? And and it's it's useful in many situations. It's joyful. It's absurd. It is it is clue in a gif or a gif. And <laughs> the first time I killed a woman named Yvette, uh, that's exactly <laughs> how I felt. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's what could have happened. But how about this? <laughs> Just kidding. There's only one ending for this episode. Do you agree with our pick for the best clue quote ever, which is flames on the side of my face? Obviously. Or do you think someone else did it? And with what weapon and in what room? Drop us a line on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or Facebook with your thoughts on this episode, or head to greatpopculturedebate.com to leave a comment 
While you're there, check out the other episodes we've recorded, see if there are any polls open for your votes, and make sure to vote on which future topics we should cover. I want to thank my panelists for joining me today. I've given you all tastefully wrapped murder weapons as party favors. Feel free to lay the pipe wherever you like. <laughs> and thank you for listening. We would never threaten in public to kill you. Thanks for listening to the Great Pop Culture Debate. And remember, like the Mounties, we always get our men. Mrs. Peacock was a man? <laughs> Good night, everybody.